Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Becca. I'm Cassidy. I'm Anna. And we're the Try Hard Girls. All right, guys, it has been a while, but we are back with another sit and sip, honey. Woohoo! Yay! Sipping on our coffee on this fun Sunday morning. Yes. Finally. It is going to be a quick turnaround this week as we have been booked and busy. All right, we have a lot to talk about today, so we're just going to go ahead and dive in. Baby, go hold your breath. So yes, I should have had Anna sing that part because, like, me, not a singer, but stop it. Is a singer, and who we need to start start with our um, first story of the day, which is going to be super simple because it um, is not breaking news. But we wanted to touch on Naya Rivera and just send love and light to all of her family, um, her little son Josie, who is adorable. Um, Ryan, her ex-husband, just put out a statement yesterday and uh, mentioned about how it's important to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and forgive and forget and don't hold on to grudges. Um, and I know that they necessarily didn't end on the best of terms in their relationship, but it seemed that um, before <laughs> passing, they were able to hang out together, spend time together with Josie. As it says in the message, they were, what was really hard to hear is how they were just together the day before. Um, and it's really sad. And so we just wanted to send all of our love and light to all of Naya's loved ones, her castmates, um, and her family. So yeah. rest in peace. RIP Gleek for life. Such a bright light that left too early, you know. Yeah, and I'm really happy for her family that they were able to, like, actually find her and she didn't uh -huh. like, technically just disappear. And it's just really unfortunate that it also happened to be the seven-year anniversary of Corey Monteith's death, too. Like, what are the odds? There I mean, there's really some weird stuff, yeah, with all Glee situations that have happened over the past years. Really weird. Mm -hmm. Ugh, those pictures are so heartbreaking. Definitely. Well, you know, speaking about, like childhood nostalgia in a way miss britney spears is back in the news i mean what's new as you guys know the hashtag free britney movement made it to court um here's what you need to know so far so last week there was a court hearing for the free britney movement um finally however it wasn't really successful unfortunately um after a few technical difficulties from um not just the internet but also apparently there was hackers trying to get well not even trying they literally got into the court hearing through the zoom conference call so the judge finally said you know what this is enough so he canceled it off no one was even able to reach britney at all before all that even happened they were able however to get a hold of um britney's mom and she was very upset from what people are saying and they did speak to Britney's father, too. Of course, he was trying to push for the conservatorship because God knows I can't say it. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, nothing really happened. We do have a new date for the next court hearing, which will be on my birthday, August 19th. Hopefully something happens. That would be the best birthday gift ever. And Britney can finally be her true self and be out there and happy in the world and free. It's interesting to me because so her, her sister made sort of a statement, mostly just saying you guys don't know anything that's going on. Mental health is real um, and she needs support and whatnot. She didn't go into very much, but just saying like you guys don't know everything, which is so true. The Internet's never going to know everything behind the scenes. But she did leave it kind of ominous. And her brother, his statement really was just explaining what the conservative shit is and and how she how it became in the first place, at least the part I was reading. Um, but I will say that some of the videos she's been making have been very interesting. Um, people, I mean, you can look at the thread of the comments. I'm thinking of one in particular where it was just tons and tons of, are you okay? Um, wear this if you need help or this color or show this or whatever. And she, she was giving it to them and she was feeding into it. Now I, on the devil's advocate, that doesn't necessarily say that it's because she, tr because she truly is being held captive. 
that could also be playing into the mental health behind the scenes of things that are going on. I don't know exactly where I believe in this whole thing. I definitely think she is being suppressed and being like hidden away, um, which I do not agree with, but um, I do think there's mental health there too that um, does need addressing. But those videos are really hard to watch, mm -hmm. um, especially the one where she's doing the Q and A. Yes, Ugh, Q &A, she's like a robot. She's a robot, but also there's a part in the Q and A. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, but she says her favorite movie is Frozen. Mm -hmm. And the next question is, what time does she go to bed? And she says between eleven thirty and twelve. Well, the TikTok universe, the little sleuths that they are, went to the movie at the, at the 11, 30, 12 second mark in the movie Frozen of the two questions. And it's about her being about um, wanting to be let go. She's pretty much held captive. It's a part where it's Elsa. She, yeah, it's where she's held captive with her hands tied and she's wanting to be let go. So it is interesting, like the the parallels of what she is saying is feeding into this huge story of Britney being held against her will, not having any say in her life. Like she is feeding into this hysteria that is going on in the internet. Um, and all I, I, I want her to be okay. I mean, Britney is 100% my childhood. Um, my sister and I used to sing and dance to her songs on our freezer in the garage. Um, so I just, I just want her to be okay. Yeah, it's really sad to watch. It's obvious that she's very heavily medicated. I mean, she's almost freaking 40 years old. And the fact that this is how it is, it's so sad. It is so sad. I understand she went through some shit back in 08. And like... But that, it, it's just, it's crazy. And the fact that, like, all the people around her, did you guys see the video of her old photographer? Okay, you guys, I'm going to send it to you. So he made a TikTok saying, like, hey, I, I was always afraid to post this and make it out and put it out into the public because I just love Britney so much. He goes, if you guys don't believe me, I worked with her. And he, like, set, he puts up receipts, like, this is them in the documentary. This is, like, here's pictures of us. Like, the paparazzi even got us together, like, he reads this letter that Brittany wrote in third person and it's pretty much she said like hey keep this this will come in handy and it's so sad she talks about how she's not like she's not free she's pretty much restricted to do everything it's really really sad he goes this free Britney, free, this free Britney movement is real and something needs to be done I had experiences and I think he even said something about like Jamie her father like threatening him at one point too like it's it's super sad and I as a Britney stand to like it's just it's I mean, heartbreaking. It's, it's definitely evident that there's there's more to just like her family wanting to protect her mental health. Like it's they really want to like control her almost and maybe it's not just family, it's management, it's everything. Because you can see it from even at a really young age, like her voice that we're all used to and know is was never her true real voice. When you listen to her as a child singing on Mickey Mouse Club or on all these things. She had a really deep Christina Aguilera voice. Mm -hmm. um, and when it's, you can see the switch when she was being marketed as this like, which is actually really disgusting, but this like sex figure Sexy. who's yeah. under 18, you can just see how she's been suppressed, oppressed in the past um, within her career alone. So to make that double over into her real life is scary. And I mean, there's a lot to say about child actors and, and young child stars in general, um, because a lot of them go through a lot of shit and there's not enough protection, I think, on our young Hollywood stars. Yeah, I also will say like, it's one thing if you have someone that you trust and is able to protect you, but it's like you said, obvious that since Brittany was very young, her parents have thrown her into the fire, trying to get her famous, utilizing her. And I hate to say that word, but like basically marketing her exploiting money. Um, and I don't know if that's changed very much. I, I think that these next couple months over the conservatorship 
<laughs> um, situation will be really telling. Hopefully there's evidence from Brittany's side. Hopefully she was able to get her own lawyer. Um, that's a really freaking tricky situation, but I just want her to be happy and healthy. And if someone does need to quote unquote, watch over her or something, I hope that she can choose who that person is, who she trusts. And I'm not really sure who that would be, but it doesn't seem like it's her mom or dad. I think her mom actually is more for Brittany being free, actually. Is is it just her dad? Yeah. That it's is legally just, like... Yes, it's okay. just dad. I read then something I remove that, that statement. She used to be, mom used to be more involved into it, but I think she'd probably go back. Around. I read that Jamie is no longer the head um, person because of his health issues, that it's now a family friend. But he's controlling it, though. Oh, interesting. How is okay. it a family friend? I don't... I wish Once I still again, had the Because article, he wants but... control over it. Like, so weird. So fucked up. Well, we will report back as we hear about the Free Britney movement. Um, we love Britney. She was my first ever concert, and she did not disappoint. And I love her so much. And we have our resident Britney stan, Miss Anna Rosas. We're all will... Britney stans, honey. Well, We're all yeah, Britney. but Anna, you like... You like sing us happy birthday in your Britney voice every year. So let's just stop there. Um, speaking on another mental health situation going on right now, Mr. Kanye West, you all know what's going on. It's been very intense past week. Um, you know, it's an election year. He's been all over the place and it is really sad. It's also really frustrating for a lot of people, um, especially I'm sure his family and his wife, Miss Kim Kardashian West. Um, so I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the situation. I think that it is, I mean, I haven't read all the tweets, to be honest. It's a lot for me to kind of go into it and it's already just been a, in a tough couple weeks. So if you guys want to tell me about the, the Miss Twitter, what's been going on, I'd love to hear about it. So Mr. Kanye in the most Kanye way loves to, you know, kind of, you know, follow in the footsteps of one of his old friends, Mr. Donald Trump, and goes on little Twitter rants. Literally, I wish we can tr transcribe the tweets that he was saying, um, that he wrote. In For example, he said, he called Chris, Chris John, mm, if you've seen the movie Get Out, he's referenced that the Kardashian family is the white family in Get Out, and that he's being held captive by them and controlled by them. Some pretty outlandish, crazy stuff. Continue. Yeah, and he even brought up, like, Laura, their old friend that apparently isn't being followed by them anymore. Apparently, there's even a rumor that she got with Tristan, too. Like, it's weird. Lar was, Lartha. La Lartha, whatever. Yeah, Lartha. her. Larsa. Um, but I was saying, I wish we can tr transcribe those tweets into, like, kid writing, because that's literally how I felt. <laughs> I was reading a kid rant. It's really sad. Obviously, there's something going on, like mentally and i really hope he gets the help um, i used to and i hate it like i miss the old what yeah you know but i really do i was a fan of kanye's music back in the day after that like i just wasn't you know during the taylor swift drama and i feel like he has a lot of demons and i really truly hope he gets help it seems that he is now um after inviting paparazzi into his ranch for two hours he was trying to control the narrative of the whole situation um, and then I guess he entered the hospital for anxiety. I'm sure there's more than anxiety, but hopefully this is the first step to help him. Yeah, it is. It's so hard for me because 100% clearly there's mental health stuff going on there. I mean, he, the family came out and said he's bipolar and he's been struggling and having a lot of challenges with controlling his episodes and his bipolar diagnosis. Um, so I definitely wish him well to get better and to get well. Um, however, part of it too is so hard because he's all lately, just like Anna mentioned, um, I haven't been a fan of his since the Taylor Swift drama, not because it was Taylor Swift, but because of the, of what he did and how degrading it was to women, how disgusting it was just in general. But since that moment, there's been this big shift in him and he thinks he's God. I mean, honestly, I, he reminds me of a Trump. I think he is Trump. Like he is no better 
or worse than Trump. I see them at the same playing level. Um, it's, he kind of gives me cult leader vibes in that sense where he really believes oh, like he's the next Messiah. He's 100% cult leader vibes. He's you guys, but he, he has mental health issues. Like, I, I just so don't think Trump, we can compare him. Okay, but like... As someone who also struggles with mental health, I don't believe it's fair to blame mental health on your actions, period. Now, there that can be reasons to maybe why it's happened or in your head or et cetera. However, I don't think it's ever fair to be like, oh, well, it's it's his mental health. It's I just don't I don't think it's okay to be excuses for for his actions. And and I want I he needs to get his he needs help. He totally needs help. And I'm feeling for Kim. And, I, and I'm not like the biggest Kardashian fan overall. And I'm feeling for all of them. Um, the things he he said on Twitter shouldn't have been said. And obviously, I know that goes to what his, his state of mind is right now. But I do feel for the entire family. I get the statement that you were just saying about how people that have mental health issues, how their actions shouldn't really be... Um, excuses excuses just because their behavior yeah um i feel like i can agree to you to some point but at the same time like when you're not getting help like there's a reason why you're acting out it's also because he's not taking his medication if he took his medication he wouldn't be doing this and i get it it's not an excuse but at the same point i'm like it kind of is because like he's not getting the help he needs in order not to be doing this you know what i mean like i think there also is like there's a spectrum of mental health issues I, I don't know Kanye personally. I can't say he ha is like on a really bad end of the spectrum where he can't control himself. I can't say that he does just have anxiety. I don't know him. I'm not trying to make excuses for him because I do think that the tweets that he put out is harmful, not only in the sense of like, he has such a huge presence in the celebrity world and with younger generations, um, who knows people could write him in on ballots just because they think it's funny. Like that's the kind of harm that I feel like this is causing with, mm -hmm. with him running for president. president. But at the same time, part of me is like, well, what if he is really, really, really struggling with mental health issues and like Kim and people have said, they can't do anything about it because he's at a point where you he's know, no one can tell him what to do so that's untrue it's called involuntary hold so loved loved ones can put i mean we all know who trisha paytas is right she was put on an involuntary hold when she's having a mental psychotic break someone like kanye who has all the resources and i would hope loved ones around him from what it sounds like can put him on an involuntary hold at a hospital it's called a 5154 I think it's 5150, I think. 5150, I have to double check on the exact name of it. But if everything that is going on is as serious as it is, which it seems like it is, and I and when I know I'm like kind of harsh on this situation, this is a to me a huge, huge thing. The presidency and the the way that he's handling it and admitting that he's splitting the black vote. Um, it's huge. This is like all of our lives their family is billionaire sources to get him the help he needs i understand that yeah okay he's not willing but there is such a thing as involuntary hold there are doctors that can put him in involuntary hold where are his doctors around him i, I know he's got doctors around him that whole family's got a, a the best of the best around him. the best of the best um, um i will sorry sorry i don't mean to cut you off Correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to have a 5150, don't you have to be literally in harm or harming yourself? Because that's why Trisha went in was because she was ODing. She was having a O like she OD'd. Um, I might be wrong. I don't know, but that's what uh, I thought it was. And I, also, I would have to look a little bit more into it. Also, I want to correct myself. He is currently not in at the hospital right now. He went in for literally 10 minutes. I apologize. I just read he was in there and he was in and out really fast. He went back to the ranch, invited the paparazzi inside. After two hours, they left, and an ambulance showed up while the paparazzi was there, but they don't know why the ambulance showed up. I really do hope he gets the help he needs. The things he was saying at the rally, it's not even just the, t the tweets, the yeah. things that he was saying at the rally. Like you guys said, I, I really so do feel so bad for him. his children. Like, yes. yeah. The poor kid. I mean, I know that they're still young enough that they hopefully don't have access to the social media stuff that 
that they can see all this, but I mean, it's going to one be, day they will. I know. And it's really sad. I mean, I hate that his kids are going to have to see this one day, but I hope that they're being protected right now from this kind of stuff, especially because, you know, other kids could have access to this, who know them, who could tell them like, and I, I know it's a, you know, they're not in school right now because it's summer and all of COVID and stuff, but I just hope that they're staying protected and, you know, the media is giving the family sp the space they need so that the kids aren't in harm's way. Let's turn this over to one of Kanye's not so much friends. Um, and in the words of Taylor Swift, robbers to the east, clowns to the west. <laughs> Taylor Swift released a brand new album, which she announced one day before launching. And let me just say, it is what we needed. It is what we needed. It is everything. Um, and, you know, critics, critics reviews are out and they're saying it's one of Taylor's best albums. And I agree. I loved this album. It made me really think about some of her very first songs she released. It gave me that like kind of country, I mean, it's called folklore. And I know that means like fables and fairy tales, but it also kind of gave me this like folk country type of vibe during the album. And it made me re fall in love. Not that I was ever out of love with Taylor Swift, but it made me re fall into Stanhood love with Taylor Swift as it brought back a lot of memories of me freshman year of high school singing along to um, Teardrops on My Guitar, etc and all of her country albums that she did. It gave me a lot of nostalgia and I'm here for it. I am 100% with you. Uh, what I love about this woman is that of course, we grew up listening to her as a country superstar, transitioning into a pop icon. And now I'm getting the alternative indie girl that I always knew she wrote like, but now we're finally getting the sound of. And I think it was super smart to once again, collaborate with Mr. Jack Antonoff, who has helped her out in so many, many, many iconic albums. Um, and now she's also partnered up with Aaron uh, Dessner, I believe is his last name, but he's from the National um, a Band, which is very like alternative rock too. I absolutely love the album. It, it's completely different than anything she's ever done. I can't pick a favorite song. It changes every freaking day. Right now, today, it is um, Tears Ricochet. Ricochet, Ricochet. My Tears Are Crocheted. Yeah, I love that one. So, so good. Yeah, it definitely keeps changing for me on like my order. Um, but I still have the one, her first song on the album as my number one. I love it, it's catchy. And I feel like it's a song where every single person listening to it can think of somebody when they're listening along betty is definitely up there as well invisible string too oh my god i mean the whole album sorry i just can't so i feel like like you said it's very folklore -y. it's a little bit alternative you know there are some notes in there that go back to her like tim mcgraw guitar days which i'm here for but the you know the consistency of the album is, is that it's very emotional very deep like every song you can just feel where she's coming from and apply it to something that's gone on in your life not exact but pretty on point um i kind of was drawn to the tim mcgraw -y slash very deep 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 songs peace is my number one i am obsessed with it it like makes me want to cry every time but like it's just so emotional and like she's like laying her heart out on the line saying like I can never give you peace, but like, I'll give you all of me. And I just love that so much because she's been through so much and has had so many hard breakups so publicly. Um, I just hope she finds her one. And this is me trying was my second one, but then it goes into Invisible String and Betty, which are like the little <laughs> Tim McGraw-y ones. So. Yes, girl. That's what I love about Taylor is her lyrics. They're, they take, it's a story. They take you through a story, whether it's from her personal experience. This album, she did state that it's not all things that she's been through. It's more like a story. Um, you know, some of the characters, the love triangle between the teenagers, um, and I absolutely adore it. Um, Betty, literally, the second I heard the harmonica, I was like, ah! reminded me of Billy Joel in a sense. This album, she gives us Imogen Heap, Regina Spector. She gives us, um, literally, I got a little bit like of like early 2000s, like kind of like not modest mouth, but a little bit of like, I don't know. It's just, I love it. 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 I'm excited. And I cannot wait to hear the bonus track 
that is coming out hopefully soon. Um, it has not been released yet, but I'm excited to hear what that is. Is it two songs? It's one song, song, The Lakes. Oh, one song. Okay. But I think she said it's going to be on the vinyl and the album. So, girl, you know about that vinyl, honey. Oh, girl, so shoot. I was going to get it for you for your birthday. Oh. But I knew that you would buy it, and I was, like, waiting to see if you had mentioned it, which you did. So I will think of something else. <laughs> Thank you, though. That was very sweet. Um, I'm. It's just what a perfect time to release an album. And also, this is so Taylor Swift. You know she was not sitting at one of her four houses just doing nothing. Of course, she was making this beautiful album for us. And what a better way. It, like, it came out at the perfect time where everybody's going through a lot. They need a little pick-me-up. Um, unfortunately, we never got the Lover Fest due to this pandemic. And I don't think we will. But I think she will make something for Lover and Folklore in the end and it's going to be perfection yeah i really liked so when she released it she put out a letter i guess also to say and at the end um i just really liked how she described this album she said in isolation my imagination has run wild and this album is the result a collection of songs and stories that flowed like a stream of consciousness i really liked that part it was just like a stream of consciousness what she's thinking in the moment and I think she's just like a true artist, like Anna spoke on earlier. She's gone, done country, she's done pop, she's done a little bit of, you know, this folky, rocky, alternative vibe. She's I, done musicals. Yep, yeah, I just truly think that a true artist is someone who can play between the different genres because I don't like the idea of someone having to stay in one lane, so to say. And her ability to just do amazing in each of these lanes, uh, it just think, speaks to her true artist artistry. Did I read somewhere too that this is the first album that she completely owns yes. by herself? You go T Swift, it's taken you a long time, girl, but I'm so glad that you oh are able to say this and announce this. I don't know why, but I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh. What a great album to own. I, just, I mean, obviously, all of them she should own. I, but, yeah. I mean, what a great first album because in a way it kind of, I don't know, it's almost like a breakup with her past self. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it emotional, but I'm really happy for her. And I honestly think she will get a Grammy from this. I mean, fuck the Grammys, honestly, but I feel like she will get that Grammy that she didn't get for rap or well, Lover, too, actually. Or did she get nominated for Lover? I don't even remember. I don't um, think it's been long enough. Yeah, I was um, going to say, I don't think awards. it's been long enough. Yeah, but she will take home Grammys with this because this is a masterpiece. It is some of her best work, like I said earlier. Like, her lyrics, she's just the queen of lyrics. And like you said, Becca, we've always... I know you're probably going to smile because we talk about this all the time when we talk about artists that we love. But you're not an artist in my eyes if you can't... If you're not just in your mold and you can go out and explore different things, another person, you know, Lady Gaga, like, she is a true artist. Emotions and life stories are not a one-way street. So I'm glad that she's able to express this differently throughout her music throughout the years. I think, like you guys said, it's really telling that she is one of the greatest artists of our generation. Agreed. Bye, Scooter. We won't miss you. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye, Scooter. But speaking of Scooter, you know who he also manages, Miss Demi Lovato herself, who is right now celebrating because she is now engaged to her boyfriend, Woo! Max. Ooh. And we still love Demi, even though she, you know, is managed by Scooter. But, you know, we still love our Demi girl and are so proud of her. And not even just that. She's a little problematic, too, but we love. <laughs> but I'm really happy for her. She's gone through so much in her life. And I, um, I've, I mean, I am a Demi fan. I really have always rooted for her. And um, I'm really happy to see her get her happily ever after. And it seems like it's legit, even like in real like, not legit in the sense, like, it's a fake relationship, but it seems like it is real, true love. I mean, for as short amount of time that they've been together, it seems like. I don't know, but, yeah, congrats to the newlyweds. Yeah, it definitely seems short, but also, if you really think about it, you know, we've been in quarantine for so long, and if you're with someone for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I mean, I feel like that equates to a little bit longer than maybe what the... I, I just think about it, um, if you're dating someone, right? You're not necessarily with them 24 seven, but then in a pandemic, if you're quarantined with them for 24 hours, seven days a week, you're gonna get to know them very well. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely happy for her. Congrats to her. She looked extremely happy. And I just watched Camp Rock yesterday <laughs> she, was, she also was watching on her story so it was kind of funny and i totally know the part now where she's talking about graham crackers <laughs> which is so funny um but yeah so congrats to demi becca that's such a good point you make about like they're spending so much time together when in reality they like demi would be traveling he would be doing other things you know but one thing that I do hope, and I don't know how long that they have been together because I know it really came out when we were starting quarantine because of the Instagram live. <laughs> and, may and maybe they were together a little bit longer before then. But I just hope that when slash if we do ever get back to reality and she is traveling a lot and, you know, everything like that, I hope that their relationship can withstand that test as well. So, and let's talk about that motherfucking rock that she got because that thing oh was big. my dude that's huge. kim k big that's kim k originals ring big that's huge yeah. but i also want to say back to that comment you both were saying about um being in quarantine and like how the relationship is probably like really is the way it is because of quarantine I was talking to a co-worker and i'm like dude this pandemic is breaking relationships it is making babies or you're falling in love like we're gonna see the spike of babies go up you know that's true oh i've already seen so many announcements all over my social media i'm like oh there's another one. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one so everybody grab your drinks and let's toast to miss demi lovato congrats girl congrats lover lover ma 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 lover Yes, girls, you guys are both on point on that. I mean, um, our EP is coming out soon. So please pre-order our EP. It's coming out soon. Well, that has been a really great sit and sip. You guys want to know something that I realized is that every story we talked about a singer. Yeah. We love pop culture, baby. <laughs> we do love pop culture, baby. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're so glad that you were able to listen to our sit and sip. We've missed you for a long time. Um, make sure to follow us everywhere at the Try Hard Girls. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. That's the Ticket A Talk. And don't forget, we are on Apple and Spotify podcast, honey. Go make sure to give us that, you know, view because <laughs> we need it. We need it. We thirsty. We try hard. Also, next week, we will be doing a movie review. I have picked two, and hopefully by now we know which one we will be reviewing. So that will come out next Monday. And also make sure to follow us at our personal accounts, at Cass Kardash. At a Caroline 19 At McFarbeck. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. The tryhards are out. Bye.